Hi everyone, this is Kathy Grosskirk with Bookkeeping Clean and Simple here in Austell, Georgia near Metro Atlanta. And today I wanted to talk about some important considerations when working with bank rules in QuickBooks Online. Now I did a video about a year or so ago talking about some important tips when creating bank rules and I hope to build on that with this. And the reason why I decided to do this today is because I was working on a recent cleanup and there's been some assisted trainings or assisted cleanups that I've done where bank rules seem to be an issue with how things are adding or being matched in the banking center. So again, I want to hopefully be able to demonstrate to you some of the best ways and some of the worst ways that you can work with rules and maybe some tips on ma maximizing the use of those rules. So as you can see, what I've done is I've gone ahead and I sorted by oldest date because normally when the banking transactions come in, they come in with the most recent ones on top. So as you can see, I'm quite a bit behind in moving some things, but I'm gonna try something to see how this will work. And as you can see, I've, as I started entering transactions, some of this AI is suggesting different pays and categories for things. And of course we know that that's not correct, but let's say I've, I've got two transactions for Popeyes here. And let's just do that and see if that will work. Okay, so um, I'm gonna start with this one here. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to go ahead and change this category to meals, expense, and I like to use the generic names for food vendors because as you know you can clog your vendor list and also your customer list with various different vendors and customer names and stuff like that so to keep it simple and all of that. So here you can see that if I just go ahead and add this right here and, and, and it goes into the categorized area. So now I've got the one transaction left and let me go back down to where it is and here we go. So as you can see now it's showing categorized as meals expense because of what I just did. But if I go back over here and I accept this the way this this is, if I have this uh, setting turned on, you'll see what'll happen. But otherwise you can also create a rule from here and have that go into, and I'm not gonna create the rule from here, but I'm gonna show you that you can actually do this. You can actually apply this transaction to money out. You can name this rule. You can have that going um, either all bank accounts or Fidelity rewards or whatever it is that you're using. And you can also test the rule and all that, and you can have it categorized as meal expense and the payee be that, and you can even set it up to auto add, which I don't recommend you do. So anyway, and then you would have to call this rule something. All right, so anyway, let's go back to that transaction. I'm just gonna go ahead and accept it, add it just like it is. And if you've got suggested rules turned on, which is a default setting in your QuickBooks Online file, and this is where a lot of people get hung up, okay? It asks if Popeyes is always a meal expense. And then you can create a rule to apply these details to similar transactions in the future. And then what happens is that people will just go ahead and create this rule. Sometimes they'll turn the auto add on. And fortunately, it's not on by default for numerous reasons that I've talked about previously. But from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and create the rule. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on here and create the rule. Okay, so now when you go into the rules area, and of course we've got those two categorized in here, and they're probably not gonna show up at the top of the list because of where they are in the scheme of things. So I'm gonna scroll down and you can see that both of those transactions are in here. And of course it, it didn't apply the rule to those because I didn't create the rule uh, for those particular transactions. But if you go over here, I'm gonna go back to full review before I go to the rules area. So if we go to the rules area, you'll see that it did create this rule, but as you can see, it has in front of the rule name that it's suggested, okay? That means it came from that little pop-up that suggested that we add this rule. Now you can actually go in here and edit this rule and expound on it or, or you know, fine tune it or whatever, which is what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna go ahead and do this for all bank accounts because, you know, there might be times where I might spin out of any of these other accounts for this type of meals expense. So, and instead of description, I might wanna do bank text 
And then you can also test the rule to see if there's anything that will apply to. And of course, in this case, there's not because those are the only transactions that I use and they're already in there. So it won't apply to it after the fact. And then you can assign it to Mila's expense. I'm going to leave the auto add off. I never like to have it anyway, but I am going to change this parameter to any. Okay, so that way, if the description or bank text changes, which we know it often does, that way it will be more inclusive. But the other thing I normally do is when, if I use the suggested rules is I take this off of it. So anyway, I just remove that from there and then I save it. Okay, so now we have Popeyes as meals expense and bank text con containing Popeyes. And then that will, when, when we have any other transactions that come through, it's going to set category to meals expense and we're going to set pay to miscellaneous food vendor or whatever that is. So we go back to the banking center and let's see if we can do another example of, of something in here. And you can see I've got rules applied. Uh, to apple.com but I want to see if I can find some other bank detail that's very similar where I can group a bunch of stuff that may not already here we go Bucky's <laughs> those of you who follow me on social media know that Bucky's is one of my favorite places to go and it's really crazy because you know Bucky's uh, has two locations in Florida that I like to go to plus they have a, a couple in Georgia that uh, I like to go to so we could technically create a rule for Bucky. So let's do this. Here's the oldest one right here, this 1121. So I'm going to go ahead and click on here. And Bucky's, as many of you may know, is a, a convenience store on steroids and they sell gasoline as well as other stuff. So you can actually purchase fuel from Bucky's, but you can purchase other things as well. So let, let's say here we go. We're going to go ahead and um, I'll just, maybe I go to Bucky's a lot, so I'm going to go ahead and create a name on the fly. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. So it'll pop open the name here box. So I can go ahead and change this. B-U-C-C-E-E. -E. I think it's B-U-C-E-E-S. Something like that. There we go. And it's a vendor. And I'm not going to worry about adding all the details to that yet. I'm going to go ahead and click on Save. And let's say I want to go ahead and set this up as fuel. I may have to add fuel on the fly, which I can do. And it's actually going to be an expense. Let's see if I have anything under auto to categorize that. No, I don't. So I'm just going to go ahead and change the name to, to fuel. And there's a lot to be said about subcategories, and that's not the purpose of this. I'm just going to add this so you can see what I'm doing, okay? So we're going to go ahead and do this under Auto as the detail type. Save and close. So we've got this categorized as Fuel for this 1236 here. I'm going to go ahead and add this. And then, let's see, I've got two transactions from April. For different stores here so here we go i'm going to go ahead and do this one and as you can see it, it based on the fact that we created that other transaction it's now suggesting that this goes to fuel all right so i'm gonna go ahead and add this and then if everything works the way it did with the other transaction it's going to ask is bucky fort always fuel and then, you know, what most people will do here is that they'll just go ahead and create the rule without worrying about edit it. You can actually edit the rule from here and put in all those variables here. So if we did edit rule from here, then you can actually edit the rule from here and, and save it or whatever. But most people will go ahead and add the rule from there. And then in this case, since we took out that screen, it just accepted that transaction. But let's say that we're going to go ahead and do Bucky's vendor and let's see if it'll do it again it may not do it again I may have to do another there we go so it basically if we go into categorized and you see it put those in but it didn't create the rule because I messed up there but that's okay so let's go back and try another one so basically what most people will do is they'll accept that rule like we did with the Popeyes one. Let's do this one more time so you can see. So 
my advice is to not accept the suggestion for the rule so that way you'll be able to fine tune it. I could actually change that other Bucky's to maybe in store purchase or something like that if I wanted to. Or maybe I'm trying to think of what you would call it. Okay, here's one for IKEA. This would be a good example, I think. So this was back in March. So let's say IKEA. I don't know if IKEA is in here or not. And look, it, you can even, it, it suggests that you can add Ikea if it's not in there. Let me see. So I'm going to try that. That's something relatively new. And this is something that other people do. They'll use that to add, you know, all sorts of vendors. But if you go to that place a lot and you want to tag it to Ikea, certainly go ahead and do that. All right, so I want to say that this is basically owner's paying personal expense, which is what we have it here. So I'm going to go ahead and add that here. Again, you can go ahead and create the rule from here. You can also exclude, you can also look at categorization history, which we're not going to get into in this video. I'm going to go ahead and click on add. And then let's see, we're going to go back to the other IKEA transaction here. And we're just going to assume that's the same thing. So we do that, then it's going to pop up with that suggest rules thing again. So let's go ahead and add this rule. I'm going to go ahead and click on here to create this rule. And that, again, is going to show up under the rules here. Okay. And again, you would have to go back in here. and uh, But if you see a bunch of those that have that suggested in front of it, and that's usually what I'm seeing is when I'm looking at some of these clients' books, I'm seeing under the rules area, there's a bunch of suggested rules that have been adding. And, and one of the things about rules that you need to understand, and unfortunately, I can't really show you an example of that in here, but... You start adding rules nilly-willy like that, or your clients start adding rules nilly-willy like that, it kind of affects the way that the AI works to kind of uh, assist you in matching like transactions. In QuickBooks, I saw this with a client who basically was having issues with trying to match bank deposits in QuickBooks that have already been entered through some other means, like you know using QuickBooks payments or something like that. They were showing up in the register as not actually automatically matched. And if you did not know enough about QuickBooks to be able to go in there and find the match, because say like for instance, you know, all these are saying add. Now we can actually go ahead and click on any of these transactions. And if you didn't know that you could go in here and find a match to something that may already be in there. And I'm not saying that there's anything that, that this would match to because it's showing we cannot find. But there's been times when I've actually seen where... And as long as it's not reconciled in the register, then you should be able to find the match, but it's not going to automatically do that. So working with some of these rules and, and adding too many rules in here is going to mess up your ability to be able to have that AI work to do the matching the way that it should. So my suggestion, my number one suggestion would be if you have clients that seem to want to continue to add rules. What I normally suggest is that you go ahead and turn off show suggested rules because to the extent that that's going to pop up, your clients are going to think, oh, this is great. I can set this rule up and blah, blah, blah. But if they don't go back and do anything else with that rule like you saw us do earlier, then they're going to probably continue to add rules that are going to work at cross purposes with one another, that's going to work with cross purposes against the banking, adding and matching features that's built into this. And then if you want to add a rule, you can actually add the rule, like I said, from one of these transactions here. So if you wanted to add a Walgreens, you can actually go out down here and create the rule here and then do all, all of that naming of the rule and everything here. We already talked about having the parameters be any instead of all because of how the bank detail or description can change. I always like to use bank text whenever. And that's another thing I always do. I always make sure because it's not on by default and then set up all those and then test the rule to see if it will. And it says it's going to apply to five current transactions, which is what I like to see. I'm not creating the rule from here, but I'm showing you can do that from there. But when, when you're creating that rule and you go up here and, and the thing is, if you see a bunch of rules in there with that suggested in front of it, that usually means that it was added by the client. They didn't do anything else. 
So when you're starting to clean up and you see a bunch of rules in there, then this is where you want to investigate how the rule is set up and, you know, make sure that you edit the rule so that either works well for them or you can actually delete the rule out there. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and just delete this rule out here because we don't really need this rule in here. And as you can see, I've had very few rules in here. I don't even really need this one for Popeyes, but I'll leave that in here for demonstration purposes. So basically the only two rules I have is uh, one of the uh, Apple subscriptions that I get. I have the category set to Office and Admin uh, subscriptions or, or Office and Matt Admin. And then this other Intuit test subscription uh, goes into uh, computer and internet. So basically, but I know this is a longer video than normal. Thank you for sticking with this. I would love to help you unravel that. So feel free to reach out to me if you think that you're having issues with your rules. And, and we'll see what I can do to help you with that. Y'all have a wonderful day. And take care, everybody. We will see you soon. Thank you for watching. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and share it with others. My goal is to publish at least one new video per week on QuickBooks desktop or online topics, the occasional motivational video, and a few surprises thrown in here and there. I would love to talk to you about how to help you optimize your knowledge and usage of QuickBooks desktop or online. My Calendly link is in the slide. Please use that to reach out to me to schedule a free 45-minute initial consult. I would love to talk to you about your QuickBooks desktop or online training needs. Again, have a wonderful day, and until next time, we'll see you soon. Take care.